Hi students, in this lecture, I will explain transform domain approach to obtain the output of a given convolutional encoder. From signals and systems, we are familiar with this concept. Convolution in time domain will be equivalent to multiplication in spectral or frequency domain. We use this formula this principle to obtain the output of the encoder in transform domain approach. We have two approaches to find the code words or output of the encoder. One is the time domain approach and uh, other is transform domain approach. Code words obtained using both domains produces same result. Not only these two domains even the code words obtained from graphical representations like tree diagram, trellis diagram, and uh, um, uh, trellis poetry diagrams will be the same. It will produce uh, same uh, output results. Suppose let us consider 212 convolutional encoder. It has two outputs and uh, the first generator function. So this first generator function is uh, connected to first stage, uh, all the st stages of the encoder. So this will be one, this will be one, this will be one. The coefficients are tap gains. So this will be one, one, one. So say second one, this is one, this is zero, this is one. The second generator is connected to uh, only first stage and the second stage of the as the last stage of the encoder. So here G1 and G2, here G1 and G2, they are known as generator sequences of the convolutional encoder. These generator sequences are also known as impulse responses, impulse responses of the encoder. So here 101, 1 means there is a connection and 0 means the corresponding flip-flap is not connected to the function generator. Function generator means modulo to uh, adder. Below figure depicts rate of constraint length 2 convolutional encoder. Find the encoder output using transform domain approach for the input data 11101. So this is the given and convolutional encoder and uh, this will be the state of the convolutional encoder which is represented by 2 bit M1 and M2 and the MSG holds the current message bit. We try to find output of the encoder using transform domain approach. This is the message signal input to bit stream given 11101. So here both message uh, input and also uh, G1 and the G2 which are uh, generator sequences of the convolutional encoder. G1 is the generator sequence of the first output and G2 is the generator sequence of the second output. So these two generator sequences are also known as impulse responses. So impulse, uh, this generator sequences and message polynomial we express in terms of the polynomial uh, representation. Suppose uh, the message signal is given 11101. So this is uh, d power 0, d power 1 and uh, so on. So we multiply the input stream with uh, this variable d power 0, d power 1 where d is uh, known as delay variable. So we get 1 plus d plus d square plus d to the power of uh, 4 as a message polynomial. So for output to 1, generator sequence, this is the general expression for a generator sequence. 1 is the state of the shift register, state of the encoder. So g0, g1, g2, they are coefficients of polynomial g1. So these coefficients may be 1 or 0. Suppose in this case, 1, 1, 1 because uh, all the stages of the encoder are connected to modulo to adder. So, G0, 1, G1, 1, they all become 1, 1, 1. 
in this case this will be 1 the second stage is not connected so it will be 0 and this will be 1 so we express uh, these generator sequences uh, in terms of polynomial notation so g1 of d we get 1 plus d plus d squared similarly for output 2 second output <coughs> we obtain the generator sequence in terms of uh, polynomial representation so here d is the unit delay variable Note that uh, D is normally used for convolutional codes and X for uh, cyclic uh, codes. This is the traditional con convention. So now we also represent the output, first output in terms of polynomial uh, representation, second output in terms of polynomial representation. So from block codes we know X is equal to MG. Here M is the message uh, signal and G is the generator matrix. Similarly, we multiply message polynomial with generator uh, polynomial and uh, finally we get 1 plus d square plus d to the power of 5 plus d to the power of 6. We express again this into standard form. Standard form means suppose 1 plus uh, d power 0, d power 1 are missing. So we multiply with the 0 d power 0 1 into d power 0 0 into d power 1 d power 2 is there d power 3 is absent so we multiply with 0 d power 4 is absent so like this we obtain a first output polynomial so these coefficients 1 0 1 0 these are all represented in this manner <coughs> so the second output is represented in terms of polynomial as 1 plus d plus d cube and uh, d power 6 so finally we represent the coefficients 1 1 0 1 like this so finally multiplexing two outputs so this is the first output and this is the second output we combine these two outputs to get the final output so we combine 0 1 to get the final output so this is the encoded output the, this answer is same as we got from time domain approach as well as from tree diagram state diagram or a trellis diagram the message sequence of length m is equal to 5 bits produces encoded outputs of length n times m plus l minus 1 here n is the number of encoded outputs of the number of outputs of the encoder and uh, here m is the number of message bits and l is the constant less in this case 2 and uh, we obtain 12 bits so for the shift register to be restored to 0 initial state after processing the input sequence we have to process dummy zeros so a terminating sequence of l minus 1 in this case 2 minus 1 zeros is appended to last input bit of the message sequence this terminating zeros is called tail of the message. If you want PDF files of my video lectures, please visit www.engineerstutor.com For a PDF link, see description of the video. You can also write to me at rkgopal2020 at the rate of gmail.com for any doubts and queries.